Good morning, everybody. How are we doing this morning? That was pretty good, pretty good. One more time, how are we doing? Awesome, thanks for, thanks for coming in. The weather is kind of gross outside, but we're happy that you're all here. We're here every Wednesday, 9 to 10 a.m. Uh, big thank you to the deck for hosting us every Wednesday. Uh, so a big round of applause for the Dallas Entrepreneur Center for an awesome hosting venue. Wonderful. Uh, my name is Lauren Finnegan. I'm one of your city coordinators along with Christy Torres. So thank you very much. If you have any questions at all after the program, come find us. Uh, we'll help you. Uh, a little bit of background information on Little Million Cups. Uh, educational program produced by the Kaufman Foundation helps engage, educate, inspire uh, local entrepreneurs while helping build startups on a grassroots level. We'll have two presenters today, six minutes each to pitch, and then about 15 minutes for Q&A and feedback. So we welcome you to raise your hands really high so that Christy can also come around with the mic. We are filming for our YouTube channel, so we'd love to hear your all your questions and feedback. Um, and then we can't do this without our wonderful vendor, so big thank you to her too for always Woo! providing the delicious treats. We're at the Coffee Roasters for always keeping us caffeinated. Woo! need some caffeine, so that's very helpful for us today. Um, but I'd like to introduce our first presenter um, and a big uh, big round of applause, as our, as our tradition here, to stand up with a big round of applause to Dave from Coco Jack. So big Hey there, my name is Dave. My company is called Coco Jack. We sell tools that open, scoop, sip, and noodle fresh coconuts. So it's a two basket old problem that we've solved and we literally can't keep on the shelf. I'll do a quick demo for you because uh, we're short on time, unless we really wants to come up and try it themselves. Really? Okay. Not a I'll, I'll show you how it works. She's coping up. It forms a little lid, so you can put a straw in the coconut, or you can close it back up for the fridge. And uh. but we also have a scoop tool that gets all the meat out of the scoop, pretty much in one scoop. Not a lot of meat in this one, but I'll show you how it works anyway. <coughs> we call this the medallion. It's the filet mignon of the coconut. These are, uh, a little long in the two piece coconut, they've been sitting whole foods for a while, but uh, it's probably still yummy. So, not a ton of meat in that one, but uh, you have the idea. So people right now use uh, cleavers, knives, machetes. Uh, there's a huge problem in the developing world of uh, women and children maiming themselves or cutting their hands off or fingers off uh, because they're using big heavy knives and they're subsisting off of coconuts. And it's uh, in the US and the Western world, when people send us pictures of their bloody hands and tell us about their coconut disasters. So uh, our customers are very grateful that we've come into existence. Uh, and uh, we've sold literally all over the world, over 60 countries, uh, all 50 US states, including many to Alaska, North Dakota, places you wouldn't think. There's a lot of coconuts. We sold to Kazakhstan, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Switzerland. Randomly, people eat coconuts in Switzerland. So uh, it's been a very, very surprising market for us. I would love me. My name is Dave uh, from New York City. I actually was a prodigy orchestra conductor. Uh, founded my orchestra as a teenager. I conducted for five seasons. Disappeared to kind of work my stuff out. And I discovered the, uh, the raw food diet and the fact that I lost about 100 pounds of body weight doing raw food detox. And these things are a staple of the raw food diet. And so I kind of got addicted to coconuts. They're delicious. If you have fresh box coconuts, the fresh coconuts are about a million times tastier. Uh, they're better for you to get them eat, and they're cheaper as well. But it was too hard to open. So about 12, 13 years ago, I had the idea for Coco Jack. And in 2012, I sold by New York City apartment. I bought four RVs so I could live full time on the road. And I started a company while I was traveling full time. I ran it for almost three years now, traveling full time. And um, uh, it's been really exciting. We sold out in five days after our launch for Christmas, and we've been constantly sold out 
uh, since we launched. And that's one of our biggest issues uh, has been uh, keeping up with demand, which I guess everyone says is a great problem to have, but it's, it's really not. <laughs> kind of the customer service. Uh, we've had some bad manufacturing delays. Uh, that's been a really a difficult challenge for us. And then uh, we put a 14 month manufacturing delay our first year, which uh, put us very far behind. Uh, and then this year we had some more delays. And uh, that's been the biggest stressor. But we have almost no cancellations, maybe less than 1% of those orders actually canceled when they're delayed. Uh, and our customers really, really love it. It's been a really exciting uh, year watching that. So turn around and watching our sales new stuff. We're just shy of about 2 million in sales at this point. And um, uh, we're not even selling Amazon, we're not selling box stores. Uh, we sold tens of thousands all over the world, and um, it's, it's been a pretty interesting, uh, pretty interesting journey. Um, right now, we're ready to kind of blow it out and uh, and start growing our marketing. We, people were not spending money on marketing; we still are, are constantly selling out. So we're in the process of optimizing uh, right now the, the company. Oh, I would. I wish I could. Yeah, I was just going on. I knew this thing would work. So there's some pictures of people opening the coconuts with a knife and kind of the mess they look like afterwards. That's the nice pretty version from, from us. Happy babies with coconuts, all kinds of, we've had four-year-old kids use the tools, we've had nine-year-old grandmothers use the tools. Um, what's that? So we're, like I said, we haven't been doing much because we can't keep up with demand. And so we're in the process of doing the raise right now. That's me as a young whippersnapper conducting uh, my orchestra. Uh, it's a team, they're awesome. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Some of our press, we were on Shark Tank about a year ago. That was a pretty exciting experience. Every bit as grueling and, and horrible on the soul as everybody would think it is. But it was, it was still a wonderful experience. Uh, we have, we've got tens of thousands of followers, uh, people, all of the rest of these PR things, they've all found us. We haven't really done any PR outreach. So, uh, uh, Whole Foods found us, Martin Stewart, came to us for somebody else, uh, all the, the, the Food Channel, the Jeffrey Zakarian, demoed with us in our first year, and uh, people just, they love the tools. It's, it's really, really exciting. That's Shark Tank thing, more happy customers. It's on your business. And uh, here's the, this is our, our ask. We're, we're, we're doing a big raise now so that we can actually really get ahead of our inventory uh, and so we can actually expand. Uh, so that's our ask. Uh, if anyone's got five million on you, just let me know. And, uh, but I'm open to questions. Thank you. Awesome, one more round of applause for Kelsey. Thank you. Please raise your hand high and I'll bring you the microphone. Hi, great, thank you. I love coconuts, big, avid coconut drinker. I've never drank those coconuts. Do you have a solution for the, like, the nut coconut? Brown coconuts. Yeah, yeah I guess yeah. so. Uh, is, this, is this a baby coconut or a mature coconut? This is a, a fresh young coconut. They're called fresh young coconuts, young Thai coconuts. These come from Thailand, and they're the sweetest coconuts on the market. The ones from the islands are usually the saltier. Uh, and uh, these came with a green coating on them originally, and it gets trimmed down for transport. So, and this they can sit on your your table like this. The brown coconuts, yeah. The, if you we have a video on our website showing with just the mallet, you can open the brown coconut in about five or six, maybe ten seconds. Uh, so we have a demo video for that as well. Do you comfortably remove the brown shell and the bean? That's the biggest. Thing. Okay. There's a separate. There's another company that. There's another company that makes a tool for that. Ours is designed for the young coconuts, which means a bit softer. We've been looking to partner with them and maybe license their tool to just kind of complete our line. We sell another tool that makes noodles out of the coconuts. We sell glass straws. We sell a little brush to clean them with. We have a whole lot. We sell the coconut, the other white meat t-shirt, which Lauren is sporting today. She can, she can show off for you. Uh, so we have a sort of a, a, a medium-sized, small line of, of separate products. It's just, it's just our core products that we sell. But we'd, we'd like to bring that in to kind of round out the line. I just need to make sure the liability is okay with them. Uh, what is your costs and what are the actual products? Is it the mallet, the scoop, and the other? What so, is the other thing? Sure. So we have, we sell all our products individually on our US website. We have an Australian website too where it's just the bundles. But we have these two companies of bundles are most, uh, sorry, our most popular bundle is these three tools plus it comes in the burlap sack. Or you can get these two on their own. 
uh, or you can get uh, the deluxe pack, which has what we call the Cobra Shock. It's a map to use them on. It's the nuclear tool. Um, it's the two glass straws, and they call the baby brush to clean the straws up. So we have different bundles like that. Uh, our margins are about 75 percent, and it varies uh, depending on the size of the manufacturer, the quantity, and of course the shipping. When we're back order, we do a lot of air freight, which obviously hurts us uh, and changes our cogs up a bit. Fun presentation. Uh, have you uh, patented the tools? Yeah. It's, what it's, are your annualized uh, sales? Uh, the patent apparently takes about 17 years to complete. With the, uh, the we have a PCT patent uh, filed. Uh, we filed in over a dozen countries. It's almost done in the U.S. and then it should cascade pretty quickly. We've got the name and the design trademark in about 14 countries, including this one. Uh, we have CocoJack.com in Thailand, Vietnam, Europe, everywhere, all over the world to kind of protect our space. Uh, we've also got great branding. We, we have uh, tens of millions of people see us through Facebook. Uh, it's, yeah, and so it's, it's very well known in our space. Uh, so we're, we're pretty confident in our, in our position right now and we told those risks for that, but yeah. What was it, like annualized sales? Uh, about half a million, our, our, well, our first year we launched in December was about 14,000. Next year was about half a million. And last year we're redoing our books, but uh, upwards of 800,000. And if we hadn't had a four-month or five-month manufacturing line, it would have been uh, double that again this year. We're still pushing it close to that. And again, th that's been our biggest issue, is just we can't, uh, if we're not, if we don't have inventory, we can't really sell, we buy and sell. So we back off our marketing. People still buy from us, uh, and it's just a, sort of an awkward treading water. So it's very, very bad. There's compounding problems that come with that and so forth. I think the fact that we've stayed strong, we're still a thriving company despite that, speaks to the vibes and respect of the company. Uh, also, um, and in, in the first year, because the, we had a 14 month manufacturing delay, it wasn't, they didn't say we'll send it to you in 14 months, they said we'll send it to you in two months, then two weeks, then three months, then two months, on and on. So we wound up uh, we had a USA manufacturer made in, in McAllen, Texas, actually. Uh, and so we were, uh, we were selling US made products at Chinese prices for, I don't know, 10 months, something like that. So our margins went down from 75% to something like 10%. So we, we, we struggled, but the orders kept coming in. People still love the products. Huge support from it. That was all mostly before Shark Tank also. Shark Tank gave a nice big spike for a while, and it still helps us, I think, uh, a little bit, certainly for the branding and the recognition. Um, but uh, the company was really strong before that, and then we sort of you know, had the spike and kept growing uh, on the same pace. Question in the back. You kind of just answered my question. Well, um, I was just wondering a little bit more about the manufacturing process. These are all USA made um, tools, um, and then kind of how you control your um, inventory as well. Yeah, for the inventory, that's easy. We just don't control it. That's just kind of what we have. <laughs> we, no, uh, about half the tools right now are still made in the USA. Uh, we'd like to have that, that shop in the count has actually gone under, so we're not working with them now. Um, the, the main high volume tools come from Asia, and we've been pretty scrupulous with sourcing our shops. Uh, we have quality control, we test them, we're in contact with them and so forth. We have the parties kind of supervising things for us uh, as well. Um, uh, the next part of the question was what? That was the whole question. Okay. Question here. Uh, so how much of it is, is raising awareness and, and building the brand on the Facebook end that's working or versus like directly using Facebook for sales? That's a great question. Uh, Sort of all of the above, they, they do work in tandem. So we target for, let's say, website clicks or conversions. We still get lots of uh, likes and stuff like that. Um, right where we are now is we're optimizing all that so our funnel gets stronger because we've got lots of videos. There's 30 videos with those tasty style coconut recipes. Those are the, they're all coconut recipes. So we, those will spread far and wide, and that'll be the first leg of the funnel to bring people in. The Facebook, so we just hired some people to do that as well, to, to optimize for us this month. I did most of it myself up until then, and it was more fire hose style. It was just kind of like spray and pray. And we still got, you know, a bad day for us was a 3X return on our investment. An average day was about five and a half X on our Facebook investment. And in the early days, it was like 13 or 14 times every day, which, which we have not scaled yet. That's still, it may be it's too late to do that again with Facebook, the way they've changed things. But uh, still, I think the 6X should be very example for us. Uh, so it's a mixed bag between them. Initially, because branding and my concerns were about IP, and my personal feeling is that I don't want to win my company in court, I want to win in the marketplace. And so I'm not, I don't want to fight as much, worry as much about the IP, as so much as branding, creating great product, creating great customer base. So I did a lot with branding, lots of impressions, impressions campaigns on Facebook so that people could you know, plug. It got really strong, 
strong branding, very easy to, to, to remember. I think really catch a name, so I think whatever whatever happens on the line, you know, I think we'll 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 be player. Great question. Uh, how? So I, I like when you were initially talking about people cutting off, you know, fingers, whatever, in developing countries. That's your, but that's how are you getting your product to those people? Oh, sorry, good question. Right now, we're not. We're still we're getting on our own feet, as they used to say. You got to have it to give it, and so we're getting our feet under us. So we're strong enough for that. We've been approached by uh, Whole Foods, the Planet Foundation, uh, after this article, Entrepreneur Magazine, at um, and uh, and they they've talked about doing some stuff with us, and we also have friends at Tom's uh, Shoe Company uh, because they've got the distribution channels, and they've said, if and when you're ready, let us know, and we can put you through our channels to kind of get. It's, uh, it's very, 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 very nascent right now, but it's something that's it's sort of a natural fit for our brand and our company. And so as we mature, we like to explore more. We've had some actually wonderful celebrity people potentially get behind that. Uh, I can't tell you exactly what it's about, but it might have been from a movie about a guy in an island being a coconut. And so it's, uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's, none of that's, that doesn't leave this room, or YouTube, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, it's very, it's very, very nice. It's very nothing, nothing in stone there remotely. Other questions? Any other questions? We also welcome feedback. Thank you. Um, it's interesting. I don't know too much about coconuts, probably for the reasons that you're expressing right now. I don't know how to open. It. Yeah. But I, but I sense, are they healthy? I mean, oh yeah, with coconuts. Yeah. Where where are they where do they fall? in the health food craze? Uh, biggest, one of the biggest, well, one of the larger segments in our market are elite athletes, UFC fighters, MMA fighters, bodybuilders, yogis, raw food vegans, genuine health nuts. Uh, we call them nature's Gatorade. They're full of electrolytes, they're full of healthy fats. Uh, they're a little bit sweet, but it's, it's uh, I think, low glycemic is the term. So uh, they're, they're one of those superfoods that everyone's talking about. There's a coconut water craze going on right now. You can't swing a dead cat without hitting a new coconut water company. Uh, nothing is like the real thing, not even close. If you've ever tried one of these, these, like I said, a little bit longer than two, they've been sitting around on the shelf of Whole Foods a bit, but if you're in a Thai restaurant or Vietnamese restaurant, they'll almost always carry these. Try them out, it's like nothing you've ever tasted. And um, the reason people don't buy them is exactly what you said. It's, they don't know what they are, they don't know how to open them, but they're, you know, there's nothing to really get into them. So now that's solved. Our long-term goal down the road, you know, right now you can go to any gas station in Oklahoma and they're carrying six kinds of coconut water in the gas station. Down the road, I'll be gone for the company, but when I sell it to whoever, uh, I'd love to see fresh coconuts as an option and just have a coconut jack hang off the counter like a like a bottle opener for them because the price is right, you get the meat, they taste better and they're better for you. So it seems that you've been having a lot of manufacturing delays. What are causing those? Is it the materials that you use? Is it the manufacturing process itself? Is it the company? It's been a, a month, yeah, well, we've got rid of the company. We made a culprit for this. Uh, it's been a, a, a sourcing agent that we hired here to kind of prevent against exactly this from happening. Uh, they don't have quite the leverage with their manufacturers that we thought they did. So when there were issues, they couldn't get them resolved quickly, even minor issues. In fact, the last batch was a very minor issue that you know we've had other manufacturers solve. It's a, it's a three-day process to fix, and it took five months for them. So or may not even finish this. So I think it's just that bad relation between that manufacturer and their sourcing agent is lack of leverage or something. Um, and then before that, they were it's actually surprisingly difficult to make. We've been through with about a half dozen manufacturers, and uh, there's a lot of tricks we've learned to kind of get it to work better, but, but they just kept breaking. The first ones they broke right away, even though the prototypes didn't break. We got 3,000 of them and they broke. If the finish wasn't right, they broke right away, so we can't use these because they changed a small thing in the design and that to dysfunction. So getting it just right, there is some secret sauce to this, uh, so getting it just right is actually tricky. Awesome, and the final question, what can the community do for you? Oh great, uh, two things. One thing we are, this, I preached that, I just kind of ran through. We are, just like I said, starting to raise, we're looking for debt equity, really ideally. We don't, I don't want to give up a lot of equity in the couple, equity in the company, I think we need to at this point. Most of the money we need is just moving toward. We want to get, instead of 3,000, 5,000, we want to get 100,000, so we can actually, expand confidently. Uh, so we are learning that raise. If I can approach any one of you or your, your people about that if you want more details about that. So 
me personally, I actually really love teaching. I love lecturing, I love teaching. I just did a, a class at uh, Royal Marymount in LA a few months ago. Really, really satisfying for me. So I'm looking forward to kind of getting into that circuit. I'm really busy, I don't have a lot of time for right now, but uh, I love doing lectures, I love doing teaching, doing that stuff like what we're doing now. Entrepreneur, I wouldn't call it mentorship, I might not be old enough for that, but uh, something in that direction. And you guys, amazingly, you know, no one asked about Shark Tank, which is awesome. It was a great experience, and I, people always want to know about it, and you guys didn't, which I think is really cool. But, uh, you know, people love to hear about that as well. It's, a, it's an interesting process. There's only so much I can actually talk about when I, you know, still getting stocked with millions of dollars in fines. But uh, it's, uh, it's, an, it's an amazing experience, and uh, I'm happy to share with that. So, so those are the two things. Awesome. One more round of applause for Kelsey. People might be fighting you to open some of those. Afterwards. So we've got two more if anyone wants to try one. Yeah. I can't guarantee you the case is open. Yeah, so if anyone wants to try opening one, they're really fun. We gotta get some aggression out. Yeah, they call it therapy. Yeah. <laughs> I know from experience. <laughs> All right. Uh, just a quick little reminder, we are also very active on social media. So please, uh, if you do have Twitter, find us um, at 1MCDAL. Use that hashtag. Uh, we're tweeting all the time about, about the presenters, about what's coming up next. Uh, also, please email us anytime, dallas at 1milliancups.com. And uh, you can ask us questions, how to get involved, how to pitch, uh, be a sponsor. We love to support the community, and we want you guys in here with us. And uh, another one quick little announcement. We do have a board up by the elevator. So community events board, please put anything upcoming that you have. Please share it with us. We want that to get out to the public as well. Um, all right, so we're getting ready for our next presenter. So please, everyone, stand up. Give a big warm welcome to Jared of With Context. Thank you. Thank you to One Million Cups. Thank you to the Coffee Foundation. I found the, the educational materials on the website to be very helpful. I, I, I feel like I'm, uh, I'm actually prepared. Um, yesterday, Emmanuel here at the deck, we were, we were practicing. He's like, Jared, are, are, you, are you prepared? Do you have slides or are you just going to wing it? And I'm like, I'm just going to wing it, man. Uh, but no, I, I actually do have slides. Uh, we, we worked, I worked a little bit hard on them, not very. Uh, but, so my app here is called With Context. And so uh, I, I've got uh, an app actually built, and uh, this is my first presentation, by the way, so uh, it could go horribly wrong. Hopefully it will not. Uh, obviously my dog is my, is my logo, uh, because if you don't like dogs, I just don't want you using my app. You're probably a bad person. Here is the first page. Uh, we, we've got, uh, obviously the win percentage up there, uh, and then the first context. I am actually the first on, with context, so anytime you see, when you download my app, you'll see that you have the first context at the top, that, those are, Context that I actually create myself. When I say context, I mean it's a challenge, effectively. Um, you're going to challenge your friends and your family and your enemies and whomever else to any number of different random challenges. And so I, I'd like to, I'm going to run through an example um, of one, one type of, of context that you're going to encounter when you uh, download the app. Uh, so right now I've, I've got uh, a, a, what I'm going to call a give context. And in this case, I want to raise awareness of macular degeneration. My grandmother has macular degeneration. She's going blind. My great-grandmother went very blind thanks to macular de degeneration. It's, it's incurable. Uh, it's, it's really horrible. And so I would like to raise awareness of macular degeneration. And so in this case, uh, I, 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 macular de degeneration affects uh, 10 million Americans, which is more than all the people who were affected by glaucoma and cataracts combined, if you can imagine that. And so I'm going to invite 
I've, obviously, I've got myself in here, but I'm inviting all of my friends, uh, and, and they keep going, and I can invite other people to participate. I've got uh, the time certain for when this thing is going to, to end, and then I create this context, and uh, it's, it's ongoing, and we then have what is effectively a group text in the background, so you can share videos, pictures, and text in order to uh, have fun uh, and, and, and share, the, share the word, you can then share it to your social media account. Uh, in this case, I've actually re I recorded a video of me, I was actually over here, I, I cut it out because we don't have enough time, but there's a I, I took a video of me walking from down there into some chairs after I, I took 10 steps. Um, so, what else? Um, so, if, if you think about it, I've created an Ice Bucket Challenge app. And so, you know, the Ice Bucket Challenge raised $115 million in eight weeks just in the United States alone. There were other, there, outside of the United States, they raised up more money. Uh, and because of the $115 million, they found three new genes that are going to allow them to actually make some progress on fighting ALS. And so, I, I'm trying to effectively recreate uh, th that and, and also make it into a, a more useful app for, e for more everyday type things. There, there are other people who've tried to create a nice bucket challenge app and it just hasn't really caught on. Um, so, the, uh, yeah, so it, it, it didn't, th those other apps didn't really catch on. They, they weren't able to recreate it. They, the ALS Foundation was not able to keep it going. They, they on their website, they're like, oh, you should do the Ice Bucket Challenge still. And people are like, ah, okay, whatever. Um, but uh, another thing that I'm trying to do here is, is create a, a central repository for, uh, for challenges like the Ice Bucket Challenge. Right now, you've got all these videos all across YouTube of people dumping ice buckets on their head and there's no, there's no central place for it. Well, in this case, we'll have a central place. You'll always be able to go back to the context and look and, and see what you did, what your friends did, et cetera, and so forth. So that it's, I, I, th I really think it'll be a whole lot more fun. Um, uh, yeah, so it can be on a specific day. So so as a, as a nonprofit, a nonprofit can come to us and create their own context whenever they want. So you can have, uh, a context that, that ends on a very specific day at a specific time so that you can get people to actually show up. That's, that's my overall goal is to get people to show up, not just to work, raise awareness, but get people to actually be somewhere and volunteer. My, my background is in politics, and so um, I, I, it's always a challenge to get people to actually show up. And so that's, that's there's a whole bunch of different things you can do with this thing. It, it, it's very difficult to actually explain it in six minutes, but I, I hope that I've done it. And if I haven't, please ask questions, because, you know, it's fun. Uh, One more round of applause. All right, we're opening up for questions. Raise your hand high, and I'll bring you the microphone. And feedback. Oh, uh, yes. Will this app be a nonprofit? Will you be a nonprofit? I heard you mention. No. 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 I'm, 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 part of it is I'm offering this as, uh, software as a service to nonprofits, uh, also businesses, and then as a consumer app is, is the main the way that it's going to go viral is, is, is a consumer app. So, so you do have a way to monetize it? Absolutely. So in two, two ways, uh, so far, uh, the, the ways that I'm going to monetize are uh, I'll have the nonprofits pay a fee, um, not a huge fee, but they're used to paying fees for, for things like this. I'm, I'm giving them their own Ice Bucket Challenge app, so instead of having to develop their own or whatever, I'm, I'm giving them their own. Uh, and also, uh, businesses will pay for sponsored contexts in order to get people in the door. Again, I, I'm trying to get people active and, and doing things. So in order for you to earn a coin, oh yeah, by the way, so 
um, at the end of the context, you win or you lose, and that's that's another key part of it. You want to be a winner, right? Like you don't you don't want to lose. Nobody wants to lose. So you're going to participate in these contexts in order to win coins. And so in the case of the sponsored context, you're going to win your coin by showing up to tutors across the street and interacting in some way with the owner. He's going to be able to be creative and come up with his own his own context for, for what he wants you to do, but you're going to get in the door. Instead of all this passive advertising and, and things where you know you see the name and then you, then you forget about it. Well, I want people to actually show up in, in, in person. Does so I understand sense? the uh, context piece of the nonprofits, though I don't necessarily agree with the fee for the nonprofit. I'm curious why a nonprofit would want to go with an app like this versus anything else that would singular single them out so that their donors or prospective donors would go to only them and not any other nonprofit context? Is it like, why as a donor, if I only like one charity, would I then be exposed to all these others? That's spreading my donor dollar to the place where I don't necessarily want it. Why would a nonprofit sign on to that? I'm, I'm, I'm not just trying to get people to donate, I'm trying to spread awareness and get people to actually interact. So I really think that, that if we create an atmosphere where people are, are donating their time as well as donating money, then we'll, we'll get more people involved in more, more things. Um, but I mean, you're right, if, if you want to, if somebody wants to build an app specifically for one, um, one nonprofit, then, then they're they can do that. Uh, I can tell them how much I spent on this and maybe they'll not want to do that. <laughs> so you're not going to have a, an option to white label that and just the piece and not the interaction with the other ones? No. Oh, okay. This is really more feedback than a question. You said this is your first pitch and one thing that I caught in your presentation, you sort of buried your lead a little bit your fourth or fifth slide somewhere in there sort of talking about the nonprofit and then sort of four minutes in you came to be I'm creating an ice bucket challenge app, that kind of thing. That's sort of the hook. I think in future presentations you want to bring that to the front, start there and then talk about how you've implemented and what you've done. Because it took a little while to get where you were going and for us to catch up to what you were trying to say, the way you structured that pitch. So I'm curious, how do you get people using this app? Um, are you going to be relying? Because you said your goal isn't just to have people giving money. So that sounds like you wouldn't be relying just on the nonprofits that are signing up, that you're trying to encourage interaction overall. So I'm very curious, like, how do you get people using this? I'm going to go to events. Uh, again, I've been involved in politics. I've been involved in grassroots, pol grassroots politics. And so I am actually exceedingly good at getting people's attention and getting them to pay attention for like very short amounts of time. So I I'm, I'm going to physically, me, go to events and get people to download this app by challenging them to random things. I mean, it will be like seriously random stuff. Like go do five push-ups and, and you win this whatever it is. Or go, uh, God, I, it's, it's always one of those, like I have a million examples in my head and then I gotta get up here and I'm like, I have no idea anymore. Uh, uh, yeah, catch 10 fly balls, five sushi rolls. Um, it, you, I, will, I will go to events and get people to interact with me in order to get them to get them hooked to, so that they interact with each other. So the idea really isn't, I don't think this thing is going to go viral just because of the nonprofit aspect. I think this thing is going to go viral because I'm going to challenge my brother right there to uh, what? Uh, what? What am I going to challenge him to? I'm sorry. A thousand push-ups a day. Yes, exactly. So Evan and I are going to do a thousand push-ups. I don't know how that's going to happen, but hey, we're going to try. Uh, and, and in the process, we're going to share videos, pictures, and text with each other while we try to do a thousand push-ups. Well, we're also going to invite all of our friends. So we're going to invite all of our friends via text, via Twitter, via Facebook, however we want to do it. We're going to invite all of our friends to participate in this context, and they're going to they're going to 
talk, um, what, uh, smack, I guess, is, yes, I, I usually use horrible language, but they're going to talk smack as we try to do our, our thousand push-ups, because that's what guys do, like, we, we, we give each other a hard time. So it's, it's going to go, that's how it's going to go viral. And then the, the nonprofit thing, I'm, I'm, I'm asking the nonprofits to, to help spread the, the app as well so that they can raise money. If you go to, I, I went to Volley in the Park not too long ago, and all these organizations are there, like 50 organizations were there, trying to get people to volunteer. They've got these really long lists of people who said that they're going to volunteer, but they never actually show up. I'm trying to give them another tool in their tool box, toolbox to get people to actually show up and do stuff. Okay. I have two questions. One is, how do you track completion? I see a percentage rate up there. And two, can you explain the name of the app for me? Because it's kind of lost. Yeah. Uh, so how do you how do you track what's going on? Uh, so the, those, those, those bubbles that were there, the green one means that it's still ongoing. And then declare a winner. So once you declare a winner, you either have a, a red for you lost, or you have a gold for you won. Uh, wait, here we go. Oh, we went the wrong way. Uh, so that's, and then you can see the, the, these little buttons at the top. Uh, if you if you deselect this, then you'll get rid of all the ones that are still ongoing. If you deselect this, then you'll get rid of all the ones that you've won, and you'll just see the the ones that you've that you actually lost. Um, so that's that's how you keep track of it. Is that? Oh, we got or oh the name. Um, so I, I wanted to put things into context and just. Because like if, if you share a random video of yourself, like I just like I did last night, I made a video of me walking and with my eyes closed to raise awareness for macular degeneration. If if I just shared that video, it'd be out of context. So I want to put things into context. Well, if you if you search for in context or into context uh, in in the App Store or on or on uh, Google or whatever. A million things show up. Well, with context means effectively the same thing, but there's no there's no hits on that. So I'm just trying to differentiate like the actual words so that I don't have that, that kind of competition in in just words. So it's really interesting, and, and I think you pointed out the ice bucket challenge, right? Because that was the first thing that came to my mind when you started it. But I think there's actually, and this is just a consideration, kind of as you're positioning it, because I think what you've tapped into is a phenomenon that's actually just happening overall, and Facebook is kind of the platform for which people are doing it. There is some push of challenge out there right now. There's, of course, the ice bucket, and then things kind of surface, and every so often one of your friends might be doing it. But to, to the point of this, is that you're kind of aggregating all of that together. So just take a, a consideration. I mean, kind of this is sort of like social betting in a way, and nonprofit betting in a way, right? So. Um, it seems like it's more of a larger platform in that sense, and then it can be used for multiple applications. So there might be a way of kind of positioning it in a way that um, it's a bigger forum for doing this, whether it's social, whether it's nonprofit, whether it's corporations, um, and then that way people can kind of go, oh, wait a second, I can totally use this and bet my friend that she can do 2,000. <laughs> Yeah, so I usually start out by saying that I've gamified bar bets and charitable contributions, and a lot of people that clicks with, some people that kind of turns them off, they, or they, they stick to, they latch on to bet, and they're like, well, that's illegal. And I'm like, well, yeah, I know. Like, if you can't actually bet through the app. Like, you can't, I'm not, I'm not ever going to facilitate transfer of money or anything like that, but, I mean, let's face it, you can, you can do that. Um, I'm just not going to encourage that because that would be illegal. Um, so, yeah, like I've thought of a trillion different uses for this thing. And an umbrella to set it up, that, like everyone in this audience can go, I can use it for that, or I can use it for that, and then kind of wrap it together. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. how, how do you control what people uh, bet for on their forums? Uh, legal stuff, like if someone bid someone to drive drunk or to drink so many drinks, how do you control that? Are you 
That's why I have insurance. <laughs> I, I can't I can't really control that. I mean, I'll have an admin feature that lets me go in and delete things and, and, and you know, kick people out or whatever, but I mean, I just can't I can't control what stupid people do. I mean, the same thing, uh, Facebook can't do that either. So The final question, what can the community do for you? Um so uh, so I, I need I need y'all to go to withcontacts.com, sign up for updates, things like that. Uh, it, it will be out and available in the in the app store soon. Uh, with investments, I would actually push that back and would uh, develop the, the Android version and the, the desktop version before I really go and, and release it. Um, I need salespeople to go talk to businesses. I need a co-founder because it's. It's just me right now. I could use some help. Um, I need developers, and I need businesses for advertisements, um, and and then so one of the one of the ideas that I've had is well, basically, if if you are an investor and you have a cause that you would like to support using this this platform, guess what? You can have your your cause be the very first one. And so I, I really think you, you would have a, a first mover advantage uh, if, if you have a cause that you know supports dying horses or whatever. Then we should we should have this have that cause on the app, and you can push it out there in, in that way and, and help your your cause sooner rather than later. Awesome! One more round of applause for with contact. All right, thank you everyone uh, for joining us. Just real quick, if you'd like to take a tour of the deck, haven't been here before, Emmanuel on the back can give you a quick tour for free. No, he's raising his hand. And then uh, we're here every Wednesday. On Monday, we'll have the newsletter with today's uh, presentation and then next week's presenters loaded on in there. So please subscribe, visit our Facebook page, click subscribe to your newsletter and to our YouTube channel. It's consistently growing and we can't thank you enough for that. Uh, feel free to stay in network. That's why we're here. So uh, please enjoy, stick around, drink more coffee and uh, talk to the presenters and have fun. Thank you so much. See you later.